Good evening, my friends. Biden announced he will be releasing 180 million barrels of the nation's strategic petroleum reserve oil over the next six months. But is this just a Band-Aid solution for the short term? As America's attention have been focused on Ukraine, the CCP has been quietly expanding its influence in Latin America. At the end of today's show, we will be exploring the importance of loyalty and why it's necessary for a country's leader to embody this divine virtue. Okay, my friends, let's take a closer look together. With inflation reaching a 40-year high, President Joe Biden has now decided to release one-third of the nation's strategic petroleum reserve. The president has declared to release an average of 1 million barrels per day for the next six months. Although it has not been made clear at what level the prices could go down after the release, according to the president, it could come down fairly significantly. If we look at the oil consumption limit last year, Americans alone consumed 20 million barrels of oil a day. So even if the administration releases 1 million barrels per day, in that case, it could only fulfill around 5% of the total oil needs of the country despite it being the biggest ever oil release from the government in the last 50 years, thus making it difficult to control the oil prices in the long run. Now, according to Frank Macchiarola, the senior vice president of the American Petroleum Institute, this move will provide only a near-term relief and not a long-term solution. To ensure the oil reserves could be maintained in the future, the administration is now putting heavy pressure on the giant oil companies to increase their level of oil production. Surprisingly, the administration has found that despite obtaining drilling permits from the government, there are still 9,000 approved permits that the oil companies are not utilizing. This forced President Joe Biden to approve legislation that would impose heavy fees on such oil giants for leaving permit land wasted or unused for years. He said, make companies pay fees on wells from their leases that they have not used in years and on acres of public land hoarding without producing. The senior administration official described it as a use it or lose it policy. Now, the American Petroleum Institute, however, immediately shot back with the statement, leases get issued even before exploration for oil begins. It is not compulsory that every permit can produce oil showers. President and CEO of American Petroleum Institute, Mike Somers, also said, the administration once again has a fundamental misunderstanding of how leases work. According to the White House, the president would also approve the complete utilization of the Defense Production Act that empowers him to boost the production of minerals that are an integral part of electric vehicles. This will increase their dependence on clean energy in an attempt to reduce their dependence on oil. Despite President Biden trying his best to curb the mass realization that his administration is failing, the recent NBC poll has revealed that around 63% of the American population is not satisfied with the way President Biden is handling the economy and the government. One of the wealthiest people in the world, Yi Jianming, was detained by the Chinese authorities for bribery charges in 2018. And since then, he has not been seen by anyone. Well, it seems Hunter Biden might be aware of where he is exactly because of the details obtained by authorities from his laptop have shown strong evidence of a connection between him, Yi Jianming, and the Chinese government. Senator Chuck Grassley and Ron Johnson recently presented some chilling bank records on the Senate floor that involved Hunter Biden and Yi Jianming. As my colleague, the senior senator from Iowa has shown, Hunter Biden and James Biden received millions of dollars from companies connected to the communist Chinese regime. But frankly, it's worse than that. These companies were effectively an arm of the Chinese government. This isn't Russian disinformation. These are hard facts backed up by bank records of actual financial records and transactions that prove just how connected the Bidens were and how compromised President Biden probably is. One such payment showed a wire transfer of a massive $100,000 to Hunter Biden's firm, Awaska, from CEFC China Energy that Yi Jianming owned. Some of the other wire transfers include $5 million in 2017. The evidence became more compelling when it was found that Yi Jianming had strong ties with the Chinese Communist Party and the People's Liberation Army. 
Although Democrats and several U.S. intelligence officials have denied the reports by claiming that it lacks credibility and could be part of the Russian disinformation campaign, Senator Ron Johnson said, bank records like this piece of evidence are pretty hard to deny and sweep under the rug. The evidence is stunning and it is growing. According to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network report, when the relationship between Hunter Biden and Yi Jianming was active, around $1.4 million were transferred from Hunter's company to the company controlled by Hunter's uncle, James Biden. This transaction now falls under money laundering, political corruption, and other related financial crimes. As the world is using every opportunity to end the Ukraine and Russia war, the CCP, on the other hand, is exploiting every opportunity to establish its strong presence in Latin America behind America's back. From building a historical dam in Ecuador to self-censoring Chinese illegal actions through the media, U.S. officials are now extremely concerned with China's growing economic and political influence in Latin American countries. During a subcommittee hearing, Senator Marco Rubio stated that the Chinese Communist Party is taking advantage of its economic importance and political relationships to encourage governments across the region to make decisions that favor the CCP and undermine democracy and free markets. However, many political leaders of Latin America and the Caribbean had expressed that they would prefer to work for the United States than China when they noticed that the Coca-Cola Sinclair Dam built by China has gone through 7,000 repairs till now. All these factors have now forced the chief development officer at the U.S. International Development Finance, Andrew Herskowitz, to create a plan in providing financial support to businesses in Latin America and the Caribbean. With the objective of eradicating growing inequality and pushing more toward the long-term development needs of the region. Okay, to end today's program, I want to shine a light on what is good in this world and what good looks like. We need to inspire and we need to be inspired. So, if all we do is discuss all the bad things occurring in the world and not give equal focus on discussing what is good and how to move towards it, then we are enabling evil with our inaction. With that being said, I want to share with you an article from the Epoch Times inspired section of their newspaper. This is my absolute favorite section, especially when I spend so much time reading news to prepare for shows. The negativity of the news can become a weight that holds heavy on my heart and my mind. But when I read these inspiring stories, it lifts me up. I feel light again and inspired to always keep my thoughts focused on the many blessings I do have in my life. And that allows me to live in an optimistic paradigm. So today I will be reading the article, Loyalty, the Divine Virtue that Serves People and Safeguards Nations, an Endearing Value Commanding the Rise and Fall of Empires. It says it was written by the Epoch inspired staff. Now, I want to be clear, I did not write this, and all credit goes to the Epoch staff, who wrote this beautiful article. And if you don't have a subscription to the Epoch Times, I highly, highly recommend it. What I really enjoyed about this article is that it can serve as a measuring stick that can be held against our leaders. When we enlighten to how important and beneficial it is to have leaders that exhibit honorable traits, such as loyalty, which we'll discuss in this article, then it becomes easy to detect unhonorable leaders. But what I think is most important is that we can utilize this measuring stick on ourselves. We can use it to improve our character. Okay, without further ado, let's read the article. Being loyal to humanity is a value worth considering, especially in times like these where our God-given gift of freedom is facing the risk of being withheld down at the hands of the anti-divine. Some people find divine merit in being loyal to the ideals of truth and justice for the safety of those they serve. In contrast, there are those who outwardly claim a similar stance, but in essence, their loyalty to humanity is feigned and they are in fact only serving themselves, parasitically benefiting at others' great expense. Today, the loyalties of the common man and those of the ruling elite appear to be quite divided. As the former seeks freedom and the latter more control, both sides are engaged in an apparent tug of war with no conclusion in sight. Whereas over the ages, the enduring virtue of loyalty with its divine ideals of truth, justice, freedom, respect, and faith have triumphed in safeguarding humanity, bringing people less suffering and more peace in their lives. It is perhaps that today we have gone wrong somewhere. History has shown that humanity flourishes and peace reigns when the virtue of loyalty is faithfully embodied among people. Our community is safeguarded, 
strong and shielded when in our friendships we keep our word without deceit. In marriages, relationships can be healthy and prosperous without rifts and divorce when we consider each other first and remain loyal despite the ups and downs of life. In among nations where rulers are entrusted with safeguarding lives and freedom, loyalty is tied to an even bigger picture of world peace. Wise and virtuous leaders exhibit true loyalty by guiding their followers to aspire to goodness, in turn harmonizing and stabilizing the community they serve. However, not all humans are equal and loyalties do change. Different people portray loyalty at different levels of conscience depending on their own value and ethics, which not only shapes their life's agenda but also impacts those around them. When hearts become immoral, true loyalty turns into trickery. Loyalty bonds people together through various means and ways. It starts with those humble steps that make one a good person, such as being kind, considerate, genuine, honest, and forgiving. One of the core traits of a loyal person is the habit of consistency, the manner that nourishes the devout will of upright men. Consistency is never wavering in a loyal heart. The noblest leaders in history were those who were steadfast. In their spirit, they were selfless, willing to sacrifice their own interests to serve their people. In Asian war history, the most notable role model of loyalty is General Yu Fei. The military genius and China's national hero from the Song Dynasty, Yu Fei fulfilled his promise to serve his country with utmost loyalty, keeping his people safe and well. He truly lived up to the four-letter tattoo his mother gave him, which in English said, serve the country loyally. Yung Fei's noble influence on his army won the admiration and respect of the masses. A common saying among his army was, I would rather freeze to death than pull down people's houses. I would rather starve to death than rob the people. The great general was known for how he cared for his army. In illness, he would console. In family hardships, he would compensate. In a general's death, he would also compensate the family greatly. The rewards and punishments under his leadership were noble as they were fair. With his incorruptible spirit, Yu Fei naturally won the hearts of everyone, winning battles and wars and becoming one of the greatest heroic examples of loyalty. Yu Fei's service as a successful military leader not only validates the divine virtue of loyalty, but also demonstrates one of the highest forms of piety that only someone of excellent character could accomplish. Similarly, in the Far West, the founding fathers of the United States and some of the presidents that followed left remarkable contributions to the advancement of the country they served, leaving the people better off than they had been. George Washington, the first American president, came together with others and, representing the many people who wanted to be free, they became the fuel for independence for all in the United States. Now, over time, the United States became a consistent place of hope to those seeking freedom and independence a place where immigrants were given a chance to achieve things they couldn't in their origin country. Many leaders like Washington fought for freedom and peace. Another notable leader was John F. Kennedy, who was staunchly against communism. On August 12, 1952, in his speech to Congress, Kennedy talked about the urgency of containing the spread of communism, referring to the threat of the communist expansion as an enemy powerful, unrelenting, and implacable who seeks to dominate the world by subversion and conspiracy and when all else fails to military force. According to Gilder Lerman Institute of American History, a depraved character's hollow promises, which often appear to be made in good faith, but are not, are destined to be unfulfilled due to his self-serving loyalty. A classic example is how loyalty goes wrong for the people who serve communist and socialist regimes. A two-faced disloyal leader of such a government deceptively convinces you that they have your back if you devote your life to serving them in the way they command. But as history has shown, wherever communist regimes ruled, it didn't end well for those who served those regimes. Now, according to the Epoch Times exclusive series, How the Specter of Communism is Ruling Our World, communist leaders usually promote materialism and paint a story of paradise on earth, a supposed collective society without any classes nations or government. But like a malignant tumor, communism metastasizes, eliminating other beliefs, including the belief in the divine as it spreads. In turn, it destroys national sovereignty and identity, and humanity's moral and cultural traditions, thus leading man to destruction, the book explains.
Being loyal to the party may seem like a good idea to someone who thinks they can get ahead in life with personal gains such as with power and money. The communists promise their people better living standards but show no remorse in turning their backs and then censoring the supposed revolutionaries as soon as they fear any spark of revolt, real or imaginary. Having allowed the anti-divine ideology to hijack their sense of justice and morality, such people become the communist specter's most loyal apologist, according to the series. We are living in unprecedented times. Those with truly loyal hearts are seeing through the illusion and are returning to the tradition of cherishing universal values, giving hope for the future. Perhaps those who find themselves at their dead end of supporting corrupt ways still have an opportunity to turn around and begin supporting humanity's freedom and human rights. If not, they might, for having betrayed the trust of those whom they serve, face the same judgment as those we read about in our history books who are responsible for the fall of empires. And that's it for today, my friends. Now, don't forget to like and share, and most importantly, join our member site and support the mission to deliver truthful information. I'd rather depend on the generosity of you, people I can trust, than ever be dependent on YouTube again. I want to say thank you to everyone for coming back and joining me. I appreciate all of you. So let's grab our mugs that matter and let's have a toast to the continuation of our friendship and to a successful launch week. Salute.